Hello and welcome to the FDT TV podcast uh, with myself, Mike. I'm Ian. And Phil is absent. It's his birthday. He's gone out for dinner. Um, hasn't got his priorities in check. Um, I'm only joking, Phil. Love you, really. Um, yes, so we are here talking about this weekend's fixtures. Um, there's only two really to recap. There was Arsenal versus West Ham, mm -hmm. um, as you know, Ian. And then there was the Liverpool versus Bournemouth game. Yeah. I nearly balls out of there. I nearly said Brian. <laughs> um, <laughs> Right, so we'll start off with the Arsenal West Ham game. This was a big, big game for us. Yep. Um, a clash of the founders once again. Um, it won't be the first time, definitely won't be the last time. Um, well, there might be a season break in between, but. <laughs> no, you guys will stay up and telling you. I'm telling you. Um, yes, so not only was this a game for um our respective teams yep. um but we were also together on saturday having a few beers uh watching the game yep. playing some fifa getting a bit jolly um and yeah we uh we missed <laughs> the only goal of the game um from what we did see of the game um it was quite a fiercely battled contest um we've seemed that we had more of the possession um but the evidence will show that west ham were by far the more clinical uh, not sorry not clinical uh by far had the more chances um i thought we were a bit unlucky with uh with someone i think we definitely got away with one on that game um with the offside goal for lacazette it's nice to see him actually back on the score sheet again um but yeah i think we were very very lucky in um in the actual result mm -hmm. uh only just on side um i thought uh pablo mari uh, made his first premier league um start first, yes first premier league start he played against uh portsmouth in the fa cup last week thought he had a blinding game um from again from what i saw looked pretty solid uh a clean sheet david louise i thought was okay um, one person that again is seems to be doing all right. Like the the wing back positions um, that we're playing at the moment, people who go into them seem to be doing all right. Um, Sagratis, I thought he was um, thought he played really well. Nearly got another goal, scored against Portsmouth the other day. Uh, nearly scored again uh, against you guys. Uh, Enketia had a bit of a quiet game. We'll substitute for Lacazette, luckily, because uh, he was the one that scored. Uh, Pepe seemed to be doing his usual. I'm going to try and do too much and not get much product with it. Um, quite a game for Bamiyang. Danny Zabias, I think, was um, man of the match for me. That's just my personal opinion. Um, and yeah, that's um, that's that's my comments about the game. Well, it's about the same as mine. I think it's just a case of, of I think West Ham just lacked that little bit of luck this week. Um, so you win some, you lose some. Uh, we were saying just before the game that the VAR looking at offside, there's been more of them probably chalked off than given this year. So mm. it, it's a little bit of luck. You have to roll with the punches and roll on next week to to try and get a, another win against Wolves. Um, I mean, press subscribe if you haven't, because we've got our predictions coming up. So who knows? Um... Up there. It's, it's a difficult. It's, it is a difficult one. Uh, I mean, we hit the post. To start off with you. Hit, you hit the post. Um, there was a couple of blinding chances that went amiss uh, for both teams. So it, I, don't, I don't really know if there's much trad to it. No, I, th I think it's because of the. I mean, the number of chances. I mean, I, I looked at the stats and we had less shots than you, and even more less 
shots on target. Yeah. Um, again, I think this is just proof of something that we've discussed several times before with with regards to derbies. Um, that kind of form goes out the window. That game could have gone either way for uh, yeah. for either team. Um, and. I thought you guys were unlucky. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm glad for the three points because it pushes us closer to the Champions League spa- uh, spaces. Um, it's definitely getting a lot tighter at the top um, for for those places. Yep. Likewise, down the bottom. Um, I mean, who have you got coming up? Obviously, you got Wolves this weekend. We've got Wolves. I think we've got Watford soon. Uh, let's have a quick look. It's yeah, it's, it's one of those that that was one of the harder games, and I, I think in some senses, bit, getting beaten one nil would would is harder to take than playing really well, and or because we played really well rather than playing really badly and losing five or six nil, mm. um, because it's like we we des- we deserved a, at least a point out of that game. So yeah, we've, we've got Wolves at home. We're away to Tottenham. Chelsea at home. Uh, Newcastle away, Burnley at home are the next five. So you think in, we've got another two London derbies. The Tottenham one again goes out the window. I think we'll probably win that because there's they're on a real downward spiral and they've got no strikers. Yeah, you know, that's if we nick a goal in that, then I can't see them coming back. Um, same with Chelsea. That we we went on an eleven game winless run after that. After we beat them last mm. time, and we weren't we weren't playing particularly well beforehand, but we managed to nick a win. Whether we can do that again, we'll wait and see. Newcastle don't score many. Burnley are probably the one that I'm most concerned about being hard to beat. Wolves is the sort of game you go where we probably won't. Well, I, I reckon we could end up with a draw, but if if we don't score a couple of first half goals, then we'll probably lose that. But that's the one I'd be most concerned about. He's saying that the next week's fixture because the other two teams are going to be well up for mm. so it's yeah and Newcastle I think we can we can beat them if we play half as good as we have done then then we'll have them um, and then Burnley are just always hard to beat then we've got a couple of six pointers in Norwich and Watford yep so if we can beat Norwich and beat Watford that puts a bit more of a gap so overall let's say the next five the next seven fixtures if we can get three Five, six, seven, ten, eleven. I reckon twelve points would be a, a good return for us. A couple of, a couple of wins, a couple of draws. Well, we've got um, just looking at the bottom of the table. So Norwich, I think, are definitely done. They're done. Um, but looking from nineteenth up to fifteenth, there's three points. And Villa have got a game in hand. Uh, so if they win that game, that will take them... Who are they playing? Uh, uh, that would be... Uh, I, in fact, I don't know who their game or their missing game is. Um, uh, oh, us. I think oh, no, it could be, could be Sheffield. Uh, uh, if, could be Man City. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it, you haven't named this team yet, I think Villa are going to beat. So... So if if they win, um, if they win that game in hand, that will put them up to 16th, and they'll be 16th on goal difference. Yeah, um, it's all very tight. I think. I think mm. again this year, the bottom of the table is more interesting than the top. Yes. I mean, last year it was a two horse race. This year it's yep. been a one horse race. It, it's boring. Mm. Like I. We watched the Liverpool Bournemouth game in the pub, and it was good fun because we take them, take them in and wind and fill up. Right, there's no, yeah. no tomorrow, but it's boring. I want to see, it, I want to see a, a Premier League where on the last day one of six teams can win. You know, I don't want to see mm. someone fifteen points ahead winning with five games to play. It, yeah, no interest in it. No, I'd agree. And we've got we've kind of said that uh, over the course of the season. Um, I mean, Liverpool have been on another level this season, without a shadow of a doubt. But all the other teams around them have been have yeah, been see, poor. That, that, uh, that's where that's why I, I tend to agree. I, I don't think Liverpool are any better than they were last season. I just think every other team has dropped off. Mm. You think Man- Manchester City are are not playing half as well as they did? Mm-hmm. Um, 
who have Tottenham, who were third and were up in the title race for a long time, are uh, have imploded. Uh, Chelsea have got rid of the player who's been carrying for the last five seasons and had a transfer ban. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know they could have signed players in January and didn't, but they um, sorry, I'm just knocking stuff off my desk. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they they've they've dropped well off. You you've had a, a very poor As, season, yeah. Um, and it's just like, well, I mean, the best team I would say in the Premier League, other than that, have been Sheffield United mm. and, and Wolves. And you think they're not teams that you would say they they should be battling for top four. Sheffield United, you would have said, probably should be battling for staying in the league. In the league, yeah. And, and if, if the other teams that I'd mentioned before, prior to that, we'd know as classic, the classic big six had been on form this year, then I think they maybe would have done because every time they've come up against them, they've put in a performance and mm-hmm. been... Sorry, pardon me. I've either got a point or one. Yes, they've lost a couple, but they, they've been very close games. So the fact that they've been able to build on confidence on confidence, it just it's not made it the season it would have been. See, that Sheffield are a team that worry me. I mean, we've got them in the next round of the FA Cup away. Yep. Um, and they've given us a bloody good game. In fact, I'm not sure if we've got them again. Towards the end of the season, if, if, you, um, if you compare Liverpool to Sheffield United, mm-hmm. um, and you look at how much each player is being played, sorry, each player is being paid, then Sheffield United have got a much better team than, than Liverpool have for the position they're in. And how much did they play? Did Liverpool pay for Mo Salah? What fifty million? Mm. Uh, that's probably the whole of Sheffield United's team. So it, it, in that sense, it, it's it's a s- silly league. Yeah, so we've lost and drawn against them in the league this year. Yeah. And we've got them again in the FA Cup away. That's going to be a bloody tough game for us. And, but it, that's the thing is it's they're hard, to, they're hard to beat because they're hard working and they're structured. Mm. And people go, oh, we don't want to see that in English football. Well, yeah, we do because everyone's loved Sheffield United this year yep. because they have done exactly that. And I, I, and this might sound a bit odd, a bit odd, but I think Brexit should bring in a new era of English managers because theoretically a work permit would be harder to get. Yep. So the likes of Gerard, Lampard, John Terry, even like Sean Dyches, the Eddie Howes are going to be looking at the big clubs should be looking at them saying, well, we need to for longevity reasons we should get them in sooner rather than later when there's a manager movement get rid of them bring in a young English manager mm-hmm. Sheffield, I know he's not he's not young is he but the bloke at Sheffield United he's he's doing a job yep Um. and people say if they play, if people played like that last season if Liverpool played like that or Manchester City played like Sheffield do people would go well, it's bo- football's boring, it's long ball football. Well, it, no, it's not, though, is it? It's structured football. That's what wins games. Mm. Uh, it's just one humble West Ham fan's opinion. No, no, I think it's... Um... We got, we got, we've had countless foreign managers, mm-hmm. and they've all done rubbish. I mean, David Moyes did well last season, and he, he, the, 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 stip, the, stip, the ship has started to turn this season. Mm-hmm. Because his number one thing is structure, hard work. You know, it's there seems to be a lack of work ethic from, requested from some other managers. Say all some. Yeah, I mean we we obviously had that um, issue as well under Unai Emery. God knows what was going on there. I I would love to be a fly on the wall, um, just so I've known what was going on. Um, towards the end of last season going into this season um because i mean i mean we had good days and we had bad days um but the worst our, our bad days were kind of like as bad as i can remember yeah. and i've i've been an arsenal fan since like 96 um and i don't think i've ever seen us play so inconsistently or as poorly as what i have done over the last 18 months well in fact uh, that's a bit harsh last 12 months 
Yeah. Um, obviously, since Arteta's come in, uh, and we we banged on about this loads of times. That oh, yeah. fair, it doesn't it doesn't matter that if your team is playing well and get beat, as long as you can see they put a shift in and they've left everything on the pitch. Yep. Um, but we weren't seeing any of that from from well from, from either of our teams, um, which is why the changes had to be made. Um, but yeah, I th- maybe you're onto something there with the whole. Well, we've seen it as well from uh, the the academy lot. Yep. Um, the changes that have been brought around from bringing through some of the youth from the academy. Um, that's I think has been the one positive from the Premier League this year is the the, the burst of younger players coming through. Yep. Um, and I think that's likely to continue as well. I think some of that's been enforced uh, mm-hmm. when you look at Chelsea's situation. Yep. With transfer ban, they had no other choice but to use. The, the young players from their academy. Mm-hmm. Arsenal are in a similar in this similar sense where your owners refuse to spend any money. Mm-hmm. So young players that young or young English players coming through the academy have all come through in an abundance because there's gaps in the squad that need to be filled. Yes. And they may not always put in the best performance, but they do always give a hundred percent because they want to impress. I'm I'm interested to see how we go from next season. Obviously, we've got um, uh, Saliba coming back in yep. uh, to the team, uh, recall, being recalled from loan. I'm actually quite intrigued to see if we do end up signing that Pablo Mari or Cedric Suarez on a permanent deal come towards the end of the or come the end of the season, um, because that's something that we've always seemed to struggle with is um, the the defensive positions. Yep. Um, and we'll kind of be a sport for choice. I mean, we I think we spoke about this at the weekend that Socrates will want to play more football, so maybe off um, somewhere else to get more first team football. So David Louise, yeah. but he's he he's still got a year left on his uh, on his contract. It was a two year contract. We paid practically nothing for him, but I think he could be a good person around for the dressing room. But with a year left on his contract. Who knows? He, he See, might I, again. I dis. I, I I have to disagree with that. I think out of two, if you keep him a more experienced player for the dressing room and that mentorship, I'd keep for gratis. That, yeah, you that, you have you have said it before about his toxic. Yeah, he's, I, I think he's. I think, and and this is, this is as horrible as it is. It's, it's like, he, I think he's bad. But the worst person he was ever with was John Terry. Mm-hmm. Who you'd have to say I I don't I mean I've never met him that is a lie I have met him once very briefly and you had by him no I didn't he was, out, <laughs> he was out with his family down the seafront and I said oh all right mate how you doing um that was it seemed an all, right, an all right bloke I don't I don't particularly like him um as a footballer but he he was mustered as a defender he, mm-hmm. he, I, I I'd put him I mean people go on about how good Bobby Moore is. I never really see Bobby Moore play because I wasn't alive. Um, yes, he lifted the World Cup, but actually, when you look at the two, I would probably say John John Terry was better. It was just if he was born in the same era, the same era as Bobby Moore. And you compare the two, I'd say John Terry was better. Mm. But but you put him and David Luiz together, they got rid of countless managers in that team. So so he he's toxicity, and John Terry's push with the the owner. He's out. Yeah. Frank Lampard played with. Played with him, shipped him out as soon as he got there. Yes, there's got to be a reason for that. Mm. Um, and and I I feel that can only come from experience of him wanting to rule rule the roost and and want to get rid of managers. So don't know. I've not been in the dressing room, but from my assessment of that would be, well, if the bloke who's played with him don't want him under him, mm. yes, he, he can be a, a game changer. We know that he, he's done it in the Champions League. He's for Chelsea, for PSG. Um, he's he's had a couple of blinders for you. He also can change the game by putting in a horrendous challenge to get a red card. Mm. So Kratis just seems to be that level headedness. Not the best yeah. defender, but mentality wise, I'd probably put him. I would rank him above David Luiz. Plus, we've got the likes of Tierney and Bella in still on the bench. We've got Callum Chambers, yeah, Rob, um, Holding. Rob Holding. So, I mean, we're, we are going to be... You're not shy of, of defenders. You just need to no. keep them fit. <laughs> keep them fit and um, maybe get rid of get rid of the chaff. Yeah. 
Well, you um, think Koscielny is uh, a prime thing of it. Was your club captain? Mm -hmm. You would say was fantastic professional until the last year of his contract. We knew he was going. He could leave on a free, so he did whatever he liked, and he ruined his his legacy, didn't he, at Arsenal? Yeah, I think that was more surrounding the way in which he left. Um, to be honest, I think the video which was released when he joined uh, his new club by taking off the Arsenal shirt or ripping off the Ar no, he was pulling off the Arsenal shirt and having the one underneath it. I think that was a little bit in poor taste. But at the end of the day, it's a football career. He been at the club for for donkey's years um was uh, a valuable servant to the club but i think it was more around the terms in which he left um but it's football we've seen we've seen far worse <laughs> <laughs> we've definitely seen far worse and we'll probably will see even worse going uh, going forwards but i hope at least it went to tottenham <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of Tottenham, I know we don't we don't do it very often. What's what's your views on um, Jose Mourinho? There's some Tottenham fans wish saying that we can, he can't do any better. He's got his two main goal scorers are out injured. There's others saying that he should never have come to the club. There's some saying they want Poch back. As an Arsenal fan, what's your take on it? Um... Apart from loving it. <laughs> Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Um, I don't cross me leg. I, it's it's very difficult um, because before he went to Tottenham, I would have quite happily had him at our club. But then again, I would rather have had Ronald McDonald at the charge of uh, our club than Unai Emery. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, I thought he was in charge. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think he's a great manager and I think he's um, from speaking strictly as a football conversation. I think he's been dealt a, a bad hand with his injuries. Yep. You've had um, two key players uh, that have been banging in goals over the last few seasons that have unfortunately got injured. Mm -hmm. um, would the with their current form and their position be different if they were fit? Yeah, absolutely. Um I th I, you can't really judge it um, based on half a season. Um, that is it, Bergwin, um that's yeah, coming. Um, I think he's been absolutely brilliant. It's definitely a, a good signing for Spurs. Yep. Um, and I think we'll see a different Spurs again come next season uh, if they loosen off the purse strings, get rid of a few dead. Again, the same with the majority of clubs, get rid of some dead wood. Yep. Uh, make some signings in the summer. I think we could see a, a much more improved Tottenham Hotspur next season under his under a full season with him with the preseason. Um, now speaking as an Arsenal fan, it's funny to see them. Uh, the fact that they capitulated or they are capitulating. Um, will uh, do I think we'll finish above them? I hope so. Um, I think we will, <clears throat> uh, especially if they they keep. Um, Hurricane and uh, Son injured and not keep them injured. If they don't uh, if, 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 yeah, if they if they remain injured, um, I think we could definitely see them around about probably where we are at the moment. Yeah. Um, come towards the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, when you look at what, where they were, they had a lot <clears> of <throat> players who had been there for a long time on wages that are half of what they could be earning. Um. That we're all running into last year's <coughs> contract. Christian Eriksen, who's gone. Out of Old was only just signed. A new one was in the last year of his contract. Vertonghen's in the last year of his contract. You know, the, the, it's a, the spine of the team. They're all going, well, I want to go and get more money. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to question that mentality. Then, so, so I think a lot of them started to go, well, well, just leave on the free and get a lovely big pay, which you can't blame them for. They, they had given their all for Tottenham. They hadn't won anything. They they're not getting paid as much. So why not leave? Um, then they get rid of Pochino. Mourinho comes in, takes them from bottom half to fifth, and then two of his key players get injured. The the two key goal scorers, and then they <laughs> now they're struggling. <coughs> if you you take 
Aguero and Jesus, Jesus out of Man City, where are they? You take Mane and Salah out of Liverpool, where are they? Yeah. You, know, you take Lacazette and Aubameyang out of Arsenal. Mm-hmm. It, it, it would affect any team. Um, I, 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 the bit that concerns me is the fact that he's a, he does win. Yes, and that's what I was going to say. Um, come got, next season, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they come away with a Carabao Cup or something. Oh, well, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if they did uh, the the um, <coughs> Carabao Cup and the FA Cup if they won both of them, or if they're getting the Europa League, Europa League and a FA Cup or something like that. Mm. It wouldn't wouldn't surprise me at all. It would it, it pains me to say that because I don't want them see see them win anything. Mm-hmm. Same, uh, but but they <laughs> will, and, and I think Tottenham fans are so deluded in the fact that they're a huge club. That they they can't see past this season where they've gone. Oh well, we're not scoring goals. Well, you've got no strikers. You you only mm-hmm. out and out striker is an eighteen year old lad. You can't pin all your hopes on him. I mean, Harry Kane. They was you rewind rewind it four or five seasons. Harry, when Harry Kane first started being played in the cup games, it it been out on loan and scored not loads, reasonable amount of goals. Mm-hmm. They would. They were trying to sell him because he wasn't scoring in the first team when he was playing, and then all of a sudden it clicked, and then now he's a world beater. Yeah. Yet you rewind to when he was playing in the cup. Why are we playing him? He's useless. He can't score. Da da da. And same with West Ham. Everyone's fickle fans. When a player's yes. not doing well, they're rubbish. Antonio is an example. We go. We go back to that. He, yes, he missed a chance. Yes, he put in a bad pass. He's been our player of the season so far, but yeah, he's wor- he's the worst player this week. He shouldn't be at West Ham. Yeah. He's useless. We should sell him next week when he wins us the game. Gu- if he wins us the game, he'd be the best player again. I think there's no. I think it's very much the same with Lacazette for us as well. Um, I mean, he's uh, from something I watched the other day. He's he's been on a a kind of a general decline in the number of goals he's been scoring um, season upon season. Yeah. Um, and I think this year it's, it's been his worst scoring season. I mean, we've still got the, the rest of the season to go. How many more times can I say season in a sentence? At least once. Um, <laughs> At least once more. Yeah, he's, um, but I mean, he's been getting a lot of stick mm-hmm. recently, but I think he's been doing a lot of other work this year um, when he has been playing about holding the ball up. And I think his work rate has has been exemplary at times. It's just that he's not been able to, or he's not scored as many goals as he did last season. But, I mean, he, he scored again uh, a couple of weeks ago um, and it kind of broke his duck again. I think it was like 10 games at that point without a goal, or nine games without a goal and then scored. Yeah. Um, and everyone was kind of willing him on to, to score because I think he missed a chance and then scored. And everyone was like, Way! Um But <clears throat> he's, he's found a bit of form again. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what my uh, yeah so yeah Pickle sorry fans. just going back yeah um but everyone everyone been kind of calling for him to be to be sold get got rid of and and all that business yeah it, 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 it frustrates me because I love football but I hate football fans sorry I hate, I hate football. <laughs> at the end of the day I, I mean it's not nice to lose and it's yeah. been frustrating all season but it's not the end of the world it's a game at the end of the day. And I think you've got to approach it in some senses by going, we're not going to win everything. Mm. And when you do win everything, everybody hates you because it's not fun anymore. Liverpool. But and but but people become... He's Phil, as a Liverpool fan, I know a couple of them, but they've been unbearable this season. Yes. It's like we, you've won one thing in 17 years, or whatever it is. Yes, you're going to win the Premier League. Mm. Right? That's two things in however, however many years. When was the last time they won a trophy before then? So they had, and if you say uh, if you say the the bloody champion uh, the the charity shield or the no, no. cup, they're not real things. They're no, pre-season no, no. So games. They had the Champions League in two thousand five, and, and then I think it was like a league cup um, in I want to say twenty eleven, um, and then the Champions League and. Now the Premier League, but it's not it's not a lot, is it, to say that for them to go, we're the best club in the world. We're, this season, you're the best club. Mm. 
Well, last season, last season you was the best club in Europe. This season, you're the best club in England. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be the best club in Europe because you get knocked out by Atletico Madrid. And I go, well, it's too many fixtures. Well, you were saying you was winning it when it when you was winning everything. There couldn't be enough fixtures. Yeah, you know. I I just still think it's a mistake <laughs> that they they mugged off the League Cup. Yes, I and do. The, I think that was beginning of the end. But that was uh, that was when the the club championship w- week, wasn't it? Yeah. So they had that game. And what would you, I think they should? What would you rather win though? A, a, a club world championship that no one cares about you playing against teams that are a lot worse than what you'd be playing in a league cup, or we'll go to Wembley and have a chance of winning a cup? I, if they'd won, I could, I, if they'd won it, if they'd won the league cup, would that have made a difference? Would you reckon they could have? Then that would have been a, a that little mid-season boost to go right. We can win the rest. I I can see it from both sides. Um, I'm not, I'm going to be that annoying person that sits on a fence on this one. Um, <clears throat> but typical I, Arsenal fan. And, <laughs> I no, I, don't I, forget I, Champions League, you don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Full place, mate. Full place. Um, I I can see it from both sides because from from what I understand, it has been able to give them bigger exposure and is giving them a title. That's literally all it is. Is a title where, for them to, around the world. So, so so it's a money thing. Yes, from from a business side of things, I can understand it. However, I think people will look at the club cup, world cup, or wherever it is, um, as a an Asia Trophy, an Emirates Cup, as um, that's cup. Yeah, yeah, it's it's they didn't really have to do much for it, did they? They, I mean, they had to win uh, the Champions League. And who, did, the, who did they play? But and that's it. They've come up against three. So there was what? Uh, Flum- there was three Flum- teams: Flum- flamingos, 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 and I can't remember the other team. But I remember the first thing that they played, they gave them a bloody good game and it took up until like the 80, 89th or 90th yeah. minute, Roberto Firmino come on and scored a goal. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember what happened in the final, but I know they obviously won it because they won it. But th- th- again, they didn't really have to do much for that. Now, I, I, from, I agree with you that they had the opportunity to turn around and go... The same as uh, Leicester, uh, not Leicester, uh, Man City. Um, didn't they do the domestic the treble? Domestic partnership? treble, which is the first time anyone's ever done it. Yeah, and they had the chance to do that. Yep. Um, but they've prioritised this, from what I have, have just said, this title, um, to say that we're Club Cup World Champions yep. um, over potentially equaling or bettering um man city's yeah because they were in all, all four competitions at that yeah point. yeah that makes sense i d- it just it, it just gets me because you think in, in three years two three years time when the club world championship isn't a competition anymore mm-hmm. like who cares yeah who, who's turned around and gone oh who won the club world championships last year and to be honest, mate, I'm going to be completely honest and naive and, and say I didn't even know it did exist until this year. I, I, I knew it existed. I didn't understand why. Uh, I only knew it existed through Football Manager. Right. I didn't understand how you got into it or what it was. I mean, until I, I did win a Champions League. And then it was like, oh, okay, that's what you get it for. But it, it just it, it's a nothing trophy, isn't it? That's the, the same with the Super Cup as well. Again, this is just my personal opinion, but that's effectively the charity shield of yeah, it's, the um, the European Cup competitions, isn't it? It's yeah, the it's Champions a, League winner versus the Europa League yeah, winner. It's a curtain raiser for the for the for European competitions, isn't it? Mm. And I I just I, I think it annoyed me in the way they did it. I just went, ah, oh, we'll just play a under 15s team because like you don't care. Mm. Um. It just frustrated me. I, 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 think I, it was, I, think... I, I mean, all credit to Aston Villa, who who did then go on to the final. Mm-hmm. If they got knocked out in the next round, you would have gone, well, that was a waste. But they did go on to the final, and uh, they did give Man City a, a better game than I think most people expected. Yeah. But if, 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 if Aston Villa had won it, I think that would have been even better. 
And I think the FA could have done more as well, actually, to help them out. I know, I know they don't, they don't have to, but I think for for the teams competing they, in, they bring they brought in VAR. How much yeah. more help do they need? <laughs> Live far, Paul. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I do, I do agree with what you're saying. They, I, I personally think they should have done the uh, the domestic or tried to go for the domestic trouble. There's no way there was, or no way you could guarantee it, but. Um, I think they should have gone for the domestic treble, other than this the the title of the Club World Cup champions. Plus, they it means they get to put a gold badge on their their uniform, which I thought is but, stupid. But only for this season. Yeah. So for half a season. Mhm. It, it, but it's, it's I could go with you got a, a a gold badge in the Champions League for winning the Champions League. You get to wear one there, and you get one mm-hmm. for the Premier League. But why do they get to wear a, a club world championship badge on a Premier League shirt? It's got nothing to yeah. do with that competition. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. No, I don't. If they could wear it in the Champions League, well, even then it wouldn't make sense. Because it's not a Champions League competition. No. Who's it about? Is, it, is that a FIFA competition? Is it? FIFA, yes. Yeah, it's FIFA Club yeah. World Cup. Yeah. It just frustrates me. I feel like they should be done for match fixing. Oh, Liverpool? Yeah. What, what do you mean? Well, Ex- expand, expand. Expand. Their, their fixtures just come out before the season. Yes, there is some changes along the way for replays and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, postponement if you get further in some competitions than other, others. But they knew that the Club World Championship was there, and if they got so far in the League Cup, it'd be there. It'd be over the same date, so they should have accounted for that. The fact that they removed their first team and their second team and put out an under 18s team or under 21s team, it's like, well, you've thrown that game, haven't you? That's a, a first, a Premier League first team versus an under 21s team. You've, so you've oh. essentially fra- you you can't you can't tell me that any right mind they thought their under 21s team was going to beat Aston Villa. Well, it's the same with the um, the FA. Was it the FA Cup as well? Um, oh, who was it? Over over the international, uh, not the international break, the winter break. Winter break. Um, with no, none of the teams showed up. Yeah, yeah. I think that was. Yeah, that must have been a cup game. Was it a cup? I, I can't remember. I remember they because Jurgen Klopp didn't turn up. I think yeah, it was. And that's... Yeah, it was a cup game. It, it, it had to have been a cup game because yeah. they had um, they wouldn't have sacrificed the loss. It was for... a, it was a, it was around before Chelsea, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was just my lower left Yes, team, it was. It? it was. That was it. That was it. That uh, it was the cup. That was the FA Cup, wasn't yeah. it? Who was that against? I can't remember. I know. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. We discussed it at the time and said we feel like you're mugging off traditions of the game. Hmm. But it, it, it's the case where. At that level, you can go okay. The the to what's now the leasing dot com trophy is played at under twenty one levels are in with League One and League Two teams to get that mm-hmm. youth product first team football. So yes, I can go with that to a certain extent. That you would say there there are not all, but some of those players are on that level, and some will end up playing their whole career at that level. Yep. To come up against a Premier League opposition and say our under twenty ones are better than your Premier League first team, you know, I know Aston Villa were riddled with injuries at the time as well. But to say our under twenty ones are better than your first team, I can't believe that any anyone at Liverpool thought they were going to win that game, mm. and they got absolutely smashed. Yeah. If he turned up in the Premier League and and, and played an under said I'm going to play an under twenty one team, and announced it two weeks before and then played an under twenty one team. Surely that's got to be against some sort of rule. You're divulging who's going to play. Yep. You're playing a severely weakened squad. Rotated. (laughs) But it wasn't wasn't rotated. No, No, it wasn't. I think two of those players have made one Premier League appearance. So, you know, well... mm, If... if, Do you get what I mean? Like you're you're yeah, you're, yeah. you're 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 preempting. He didn't you didn't spring it on the night and say right we're going to play a full full team 
and then oh no it's a completely different team selection to what anyone expected he said mm. it weeks before oh yeah we're going to play in there we're going to, no one's going to be there so under 21s are playing yep and i'm not going to watch it because it's on a different time zone i'm not working twice in the night <laughs> like, you've just you've just dumped all over the tradition of that cup yeah um so I mean, Jürgen, yeah, I, I like when Jurgen Klopp first came. I liked him because he was animated, and you knew Liverpool were going to play entertaining football. But the more he's got on, the more I've not liked him. We didn't win tonight because of the wind. That was last season's corker, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was too windy tonight. We shouldn't have been playing football. But what are you on about? And then their fans think it's all right to come out with that excuse when we got Storm Edna or whatever bloody name it was yeah. that come out and he said where well, Phil come out that corker as well yeah it's too it's, uh, it's really windy it's hard to play well you it's only hard to play if you play long ball football mm. I, I this frustrates me that that because they they're winning things or, or because they're now desirable as such and they're they're out ahead there's no pushback for them for anything I really feel like we've um Gone on a bit of a. We have gone on a, 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 no, 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 on a on a bit of a vendetta against Liverpool here. It's probably making us sound like proper bitter and twisted. I am bitter and twisted. What bit is, what makes me bitter and twisted is Lanzini got booked for diving two seasons ago, and Everton fan got book, uh, not fan, and Everton player got booked uh, retrospectively banned as well. Mo Salah dives every week, like quite clearly, and doesn't get booked for diving. Doesn't get mm. retrospective ban. Fred got his leg taken out by Otamendi and got booked for diving. Yes. He got looked at by VAR and they went, yeah, still a booking. It was a penalty, the red, a, a yellow, second yellow for Otamendi. If it was Salah, it would have been a penalty. Mm. And VAR wouldn't have looked at it. That's why, that's <sighs> why everyone, everyone makes the jokes about Liverpool, isn't it, though? Yeah. Because of the amount of decisions that go, go for them. I can just feel now. Well, oh, we've had it. There's so many decisions rolled off as well. Um, well, well, I posted on Twitter, didn't I, a, a thing the other day about VAR and, and the points difference it would be. So yes. not all VAR decisions make a change in um, the final score. Mm -hmm. But the ones that do, let's see if I can find it. Uh, right here it is so Liverpool would be four points worse off yep if all the VAR decisions had been correct so it's not to say that they haven't had some with them go with them and hadn't had some go against them but from that that's the highest uh, no sorry that's a lie Brighton have had the most minus seven they'd be seven points worse off but Liverpool are second highest this is as of a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. so so there would be Five, uh, oh, only fifteen points still. So yes, they're still at the top, but it, it it's just it's just frustrating. We did this earlier on in the season as well when ESPN I think released those figures, yep. and I think we were nine points worse off from crap decisions. Yeah, uh, yeah. through VR. I mean, if it, that that's <clears> showing <throat> the say ones that affected final scores, so goals hmm. all run and off mostly. But what, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you looked at all the decisions that were wrong and right, I think there's more wrong than there has been right. And well, that's, we had, that's not just for Liverpool, that's for all the teams. We had that penalty decision against... Um, I don't know, that was last year, I think. You I know Sokrasis' Sir, Sir goal was definitely chalked off. Um, I can't remember, it might have been Crystal Palace. Oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter because it's all yeah. if, if, buts and maybes. But um, <clears throat> yeah, the... Um, that I, I I think it, it just seems to be that they are getting the kind of rub of the green with decisions and stuff at the moment, and some some teams are a little bit less fortunate. But we've also had um, the saying? likes of I think Bournemouth have been a bit unfortunate with VAR decisions and all that sort of stuff. But we said we said it didn't game we? Game changing decisions like, like for for final points, West Ham would be six points better off. And you'd be not having to worry about it'd relegation. Be eleventh. Yeah. Um. It, 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 it's it's one of those things. I mean, that the, the handball rule. Declan Rice had one where he had a, a ball punted at him from, essentially his feet that hit his hand while he was at full sprint and it got ruled off. 
Mm-hmm. That, that it wasn't intentional. It was out of his control. Yes, it's hit his hand, but he's a full sprint. What do you want him to do? Like he's, he's not. He's not in an unnatural position. You've had one of those. Uh, it was a, from a little bit further away, but the ball was punted at someone. That I mean, they're, they're saying that these players kick the ball at sixty mile an hour. How do you move out the way from from say ten yards away at most of something that's moving sixty mile an hour yeah. and it's like while you're moving full speed? It's it's impossible. When when you say slow motion, oh yeah, we could have moved. Yeah, but play at full speed. Oh, that was point four of a second. You know, it's, yeah. it's impossible. And then Tottenham get Deli Ali like this, reaching out for the ball to bring it, it down to so score standing. a goal and get it. Like, oh no, that was fine. But it was given it hit the same place that four goals earlier in the day were ruled off for. Yeah. You know? I am, I am looking to see what, how VAR decisions and stuff are addressed going forward next season. They definitely need to start using the monitors next season, and yeah. I'll be very surprised there if was, they don't. I did see a monitor was used in the Newcastle-Southampton game. Oh, okay. A red card. He didn't look at it. He looked at a, a, still, a still of the tackle, and they rewound and played it for him once, and then he sent the bloke off. But it did get used. I think there's there's a lot of fans now who are fed up with football. I know at least four who have been season seat holders who no longer go. Right. Because it's it's ruined the game for them. They can't celebrate. They, they said the biggest thing, we can't celebrate goals. We don't know what's going on. There's decisions which are clearly wrong that have been seen by the whole stadium, home and away, that don't get given or get given the other way. And it's like if 60,000 people at the stadium who are furthest away from it can see it, why can the bloke who can work it from 15 angles yeah. not see it, you know? So, I mean, I know four season ticket holders from four different clubs that no longer go to the footwork giving their season tickets up. Wow. It's, I mean, it's made... I said it's just a game. I do like watching football. I do like enjoying it. But it's made it hard for me to watch it. Mm. I get, uh, there, there's been... I would say probably eight, nine games this season where I've got somewhere between 25 and 45 minutes into the game. There's been a really horrible VAR decision. I've gone, I'm not watching this anymore. Yeah. And just, and just turned it off. I think a lot of people are feeling like that. And uh, that's that's why stuff needs to change. Why did, uh, why, going why into did next they not? Season. Why did they not? We, we had this discussion at the weekend. But why mm. did they not consult the, the leagues, the Bundesliga, the uh, Syria? They've had it in for three years. And, I don't, I and don't, get it I don't right, know. and the fans are now happy with it. Why do we have to go, we're better than you, we know better, we'll get it right the first time? Well, you won't, because b- both of those leagues did that. Surely we should be learning from that, those mistakes. Yep. And I, I hope they do take this away as lessons learned, um, because it's been, it's been an up and down season. Um, there are there have been decisions that have gone some clubs' ways and decisions that haven't. And it, it has, although it has shown in attendances for um, lower league clubs, non-league clubs, and women's football have all gone up this year on average. Wow! Where the Premier League has gone down. So it could be a good thing for lower league football and women's football, um, and under twenty ones football. But if they carry on and don't make the changes to appease fans, I think that could be the death of the Premier League. Think how, think how, well, think, think how vengeful fans are. Yeah. Would they not rather go and watch their under-21s team where the decisions are right and it's, it's football that they, they grew up loving because there's no VAR? Or, or the Women's League, which is just as good quality, doesn't get the exposure it should, and there's no VAR? Or the championship, or the non-league local non-league team, and go. I'm not paying sixty pound a ticket, or for a really expensive Sky package that I don't need, and a BT package to be frustrated by it every week. <laughs> I've had. And once you've lost them, I think it's going to be hard, hard to get them back because when it, uh, that, the first question will be, is VAR still in, in it? And when they say yes, I go, I'm not interested. I think that could be down to... I, I appreciate what you're saying. I'm going to be controversial here, yeah, here and say um, that there could be a lot of factors into um, the downturn in fans. I can certainly speak from our fans that they've not been happy with the style of football that's been played, yeah. um, the cost of tickets, um, 
and they're going to be kind of like the two main factors certainly for our club i mean we've reported i think it was like a 10 million or uh, an x amount of million uh, downturn in revenue and that i can uh, honestly say that that would be more down to the brand of football that have been played more than the var decisions um, yeah. But yeah, I, I do agree with I, what you're saying. It could be a contributing factor, but it's not certainly I, I, not. I think it, for, for a lot of people, it could be the straw that breaks camel's back. Potentially. It has, yeah. it has been for me. I mean, I'm used to West Ham being in a relegation battle and, and being relegated every fifth season. I'm, I'm used to that. That's that's what I would say is the West Ham way. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what we do. So it's not the worst we've ever played football, but it's the least enjoyable. Because when hmm. there is a moment you want to jump off the city, it gets ruined by VAR. Yeah. Okay? Or you want to jump off your seat and into the row in front and run down the stairs and have a big bundle at the bottom. You can't, <laughs> you can't do it because you go, oh, oh, no, I've got to wait six minutes before they decide it wasn't offside. And then by yeah, that point, yeah. it's like, oh, uh, where you go to the women's football, you don't have to do that. There's a goal you can jump up and celebrate. You get the under 21s football, you can jump up and celebrate. You get non league football, you can jump up and celebrate. Yep. You can't do that in the Premier League anymore. Unless you say the old famous, oh, I'm going to do my flag impression there. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, you know, I, I, I just feel like it's, it, costs are only going up. Mm-hmm. Well, the cost of everything in, in life is going up. Yep. Yet, why, why would you, why are fans going to continue to pay rising television subscriptions, rising ticket prices, rising shirt prices? To get kicked in the teeth every every week, with the brand, as you say, brand of football not getting a result, and then when they do get a result, it getting chalked off as a draw because of VAR. Yep. And then they come out twenty minutes later saying, "Oh, sorry, we got the decision wrong." Yeah, yeah. And then you watch it on match of the day and go, "Well, that wasn't. That was clearly not offside, or that clearly mm. wasn't a handball." And it, I, I just feel like it, it could be the it could be the deathers of the Premier League as we know it, and. The only, I think the only thing that will save it next season mm-hmm. is if they do release this Premier League now, or whatever it's going to be called, Premier League TV for the £10 a month. That's the only thing that's going to keep people interested. Yep, we and spoke would, about this uh, at the weekend, and I would definitely be signing up for it. Oh, I would. I would. 100%. It, yeah. It's, I mean, I, I got um, Now TV this year on a, on a deal at £99 for the year. After that, it's, I think it's £39 a month. So I will be cancelling it at the end of the season. Um, but you think, how many people play, pay for Sky and pay for BT and then try and get to a few games? <laughs> well, exactly. And, and do you want to with the fact that you play... You're, you're, all right, let, let's put it this way. If you was playing fantastic football... Mm-hmm. Um, and you're, let's say you're sitting fourth or third in the league, you're having a particularly good season, you're sitting third, um, but VAR ruins your excitement. Because you've had, you've had six, six goals in the last ten weeks ruled off for absolute bullshit. Yeah. Are you going to look at it and go, why am I paying for this? Surely you've got you've got you got there's got to be a little part of you that thinks like, why am I no, I, why am I bothering? Yeah, no, I do, I do agree, and there are there have been countless decisions when watching stuff like your match of the day or your uh, football focus or where whatever football thing that you've been watching, um, and you do see that there's been an absolute howler. Even listening to Talksport, yeah. um, where they've talked about the the decisions that have potentially been made. I mean, they were talking um, a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember what it was they were specifically talking on, where the guy that was given a, or gave a VAR decision had been... Um, he had two games in the night, didn't he? Is that the one you're on about? Yeah, but also but also he had, um, or he'd refereed least or less games than the ref that was on the pitch. Yeah. Um, and they were talking about if if is there some sort of um like complex that they've got so it had the decision on the pitch stood and they've said oh no we've looked at it that they don't that's it they don't want to undermine the referees oh, um, like, the, like the hierarchy thing of yes or hierarchy yeah, yeah. Thing of, of you're more experienced than me so i shouldn't be telling you that you're wrong that's it yeah i 
I, I can understand that in a sense. But at the end of the day, that's, that, that's yeah, yeah, that is specifically your job. You are there to to say this this is wrong, or you have made a wrong decision. You need to either look at this, or I'm telling you that that's a wrong decision. Yeah, the bit the bit that frustrates me is when you when you listen to talk sport or you listen to the BBC Radio Five Sport, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, or you watch it on Sky Sports News, or you watching it live on telly. The commentators get it right. The radio presenters get it right. The pundits get it right. The crowd get it right. Why is it the only people who only get it wrong is the people who are fucking paid? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's their job is to go. Was that right? And you, um, it's a bit like it's a bit like, isn't it? Showing showing a tackle to your nan who knows nothing about football and going good or bad and she'd watch it once and go that was horrible well yellow card or oh that was bad wasn't it red card she goes oh we got the ball oh okay it's fine carry on that's as, that's no, how yeah. quick it should be Nam, what do you reckon <laughs> one reaction that's all you need you don't need to you don't need to look at it for 15 angles no well they were talking i, I did hear something about talking in um about the offside decision they're going to be doing the daylight rule what do you mean the daylight rule? I, th- I think it was called the daylight rule, where um, obviously we're we're getting so pernickety that, at the moment that it's you pick or you draw the lines on your computer screen or wherever it is, and you're looking at toenails and yep. all this sort of stuff. And I think the daylight rule, so it's effectively changing the offside rule. And I think it's more that if you look at the or you look at a certain picture, and if there is clear and obvious daylight between the 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 attacker and, the, and the, the defender, then it's an offside. But when you're looking at whether their their first stud um, is slightly off or slightly over a digital it's line, not offside. Yeah. So, but that's unfair on players like Ibrahimovic. In what sense? His nose is like thirty meters long. <laughs> but and I think that's that's where they're coming in with this daylight rule. It's nothing against Ibrahim, which is one of the best strikers games ever seen. But he has got a big nose. <laughs> yes, but he is Slatan. He is Latan. <laughs> and if he wants to come to West Ham for a season, I will happily take him. Yeah, you mate, you're going to help him pack his bags, aren't you? Yeah, he'd come live with me. <laughs> Driving to and from training every day. Yep. But yeah. I even stroke his hair when he goes to sleep. <laughs> Good Zlatan. Yeah. This this has definitely been a, a a ranty podcast. We haven't had one of these in a we while. Haven't. I'm just fed up but, with football. I'm fed up I'm, with football this year. I'm 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 starting to enjoy it again, and I think that's kind of results driven. I think we should just cancel it for the rest of the season. Cause Agreed. Because of, of Corona, right? Yep. Just cancel it because that that's this is this this. I think this is what done it for me at the weekend. Is you're not allowed to shake hands. So they walk past each other going, oh, you're right. Unless, unless you're Fred and you tap everyone the gen- on the shoulder. But the then gentleman's you're, not. Yeah, but then you're, or the, <laughs> the, the that monkey raises the eyebrows, you know, you're like, oh, you're all right. And that's like the, head, <laughs> the backwards head nod, you know? Oh, mate. Uh, right. But then you can be all over each other for 90 minutes, going for tackles, corners, hugging and whatnot, trying to jostle each other. And then you can hug and shake hands and jump all over each other at goals and yeah, after yeah. the game. What the fuck is that yeah. about? I, don't know. I think that's a bit of stuff for me. So just just scrap this season. I don't care anymore. Write it off completely. Yep. It doesn't matter. Get on with the Euros. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'm, I wonder what's going to happen with that. I, I reckon they'll cancel it. If... I hear yeah. I reckon it'll be cancelled or pushed back to, like, October. But then that's going to interfere with the league season. Yep. Well, the World Cup is in a couple of years. Why not have a practice run at it? Yeah, good point. Good point. Got that. Because, I mean, they're not going to cancel games oh. over here at the minute by having yeah. Germany. And they're playing games behind closed doors in Germany. I think, I think, I think if that happens over here and you say to, you say to, play, uh, you say to fans now, you can't go and watch. And, oh, oh by the way, it's not televised. And if you share a stream on Facebook, you can get banned. 
right? Then I think at that point that that will be the death. Coronavirus, the death. coronavirus will have killed football. Coronavirus won. Maybe football that, didn't. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what this one should be called. I mean, the predictions was was other way around, but. Uh, Maybe maybe that's what uh, this one should be called. <laughs> Coronavirus one handshakes nil. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that, that's what we're going with. Yes, that's what my we're creative going with. input. Yeah, it, this I yeah. It'd be interesting to see whether we've actually got we're going to play players that are in form because Gareth or if Gareth Southgate goes with players that he likes. Because he started off really well by going with players in form, and then he's fallen mm-hmm. into the trap of, well, well, this player's played really well. Because I think if if Harry Kane gets selected, Jordan Henderson gets selected, and Pickford's in goal, it's not going to be the same atmosphere as what it was at the World Cup, is it? No. Because Pickford's playing awful, and the other two are, uh, will Very come back from injury just just before the Euros, <coughs> if they're on if they're on track. Mm. So surely you'd go, well, they're, they're not match fit. And I know that they are going to be fit because they are professional athletes, but there's fit and match sharp in there. Yeah. You know, it, it, it takes a good five, six games for a player to come back from a long-term injury and be match sharp. Yep. And they're not going to be there unless you get to, through to the final. Yeah. And I, I can't see us doing that without a full fit of on, informed match sharp players. Mm. I don't know who we'd have up front. At the beginning Me. of the season, I would have said Danny Ings. No, uh, not Danny Ings, um, Tammy Abraham. But mm-hmm. he's out injured. Yep. Danny Ings at the minute has went on a bit of a scoring go, but then he's, he's dropped off a little bit. Um, I don't know what strike you'd have up front. Ashley. Get down on FIFA. Down on FIFA. Yeah. What, up front for England at the Heroes? Yeah, man. We'll just have him sitting at a desk like that. Control it, controlling bionic limbs of Harry Kane. <laughs> uh, who, who would you have? Come on, it's a serious question here. Who would you have up front for the Euros? I, I honestly have no idea. It's got to be Ashley Barnes <clears throat> and Burnley. I've, yeah, but <laughs> Jamie Vardy's get... ruled himself out. Yep. Danny Danny Ings, you would say yes, but he's out of four. He, he's not scoring in the same sense that he was. Callum Wilson, possibly, but again, not scoring loads. Harry Kane's out injured. Uh, Tammy Abraham's out injured. Marcus Rashford's out injured. Yep. Do you go with Mason Greenwood? Doing all right. I I I think this is definitely going to have to be an anomaly. Do you of... go with Inketia? Under twenty one levels, they're the two to go for. Because mm. who else have you got? You got Ashley Barnes at Burnley. He'll nick you a goal. I would say Chris Wood, but he's from New Zealand. <laughs> we like calling Commonwealth countries to come play for us again. <laughs> It's, you're part of Commonwealth. You're playing with us. It's it's it's. I, I suppose it just depends on who comes back from injury towards the time of selection, doesn't it? Um, and how and how many games they have played? Because you you are looking at the likes of your Tammy Abraham's. Um, and Harry Kane. I I think he's a annoyingly heavy schedule, and we'll get three games in. In which case, here I think it's going to be dead set on going. But I can't. I don't know why. Would you not rather play like Liverpool do and have like a false nine as Firmino, but have a Jack Greenish played in that position to push to push Sterling up, push whoever's playing on the right up, Sancho, Sancho, and go right. You're the main attacking threat, and just have someone drop a bit deeper and have midfielders rushing the edge of the box. But again, you, I, I, I do understand what you're saying, it, and it is going to be massively hypocritical for... Go with players who've already played. You'd put Pickford in goal, wouldn't you? 
Um, no. <laughs> no I, de- I definitely wouldn't put Pickford in goal. I think it's been shocking this season. Um, but you're going to have to go with your best. And if they've got some match experience, I mean, granted, if you look at the um, the fixtures that, that we've got from the opening legs, I'm, it's it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Because you're going to have the likes of the, the Wayne Rooney situation where he broke his foot um, and was still selected. And I don't think he ended up being fit, but I think you have to take that, potentially have to take that gamble. And if Harry Kane is fit by the by the end of the season and does get a couple of games, you can't not take him. What if he doesn't score in any of those games? Well, I think Gareth Southgate's on the on the chop, or I'm getting the sack for picking him. <laughs> I, I I think it could be the end of Southgate, you know. And and some says it's not for his own doing. No, and that's that's what I was just about to say. That that kind of does the whole Mourinho conversation. Um, He's been it's, it, dealt a bad hand, but he's yeah, yeah. but he, but he's not got twenty five players to choose from. No, he's got well, theoretically, how many how many blokes are English that live around the world? Good, probably thirty million. Wouldn't have a clue. Right, so let let's say thirty million. There's more than that. Right, so say there's thirty million British or English blokes across the world. He's got thirty million people. To, he could ring you up and go, "Mike, you're playing next weekend." I'll take it, mate. There's nothing to stop him. Mm. You'd probably go, "Can I only play twenty minutes? Because I will die." <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, no, I've, give me thirty. Give me thirty. 30 minutes. At least. Yeah. yeah, I'll just. For the last five, I'll just stand on the ball, with me, like on on the on the box, with my arm up, going, <sighs> and pointing at yourself and go calling for it. But um, I mean, I, I wouldn't la- I wouldn't last twenty. So I thought I was being. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at the ref, uh, at the Gareth and go, "That's it, get me off." You go, we get haven't finished off. the warm up yet. <laughs> <laughs> but as I say, he's not, he's not the, quite the same in the same sense that that Mourinho's got. I get what you're getting at, but. He, Mourinho's mm-hmm. got a registered squad of players that he's got to pick from. Mm-hmm. Where Gareth Southgate's got every league to pick from. And more, if he wanted to. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why you would choose someone who doesn't play football, but you could ring up Ollie Murs and go, Ollie, you're, uh, you're in. No, he plays in defence, doesn't he? Yeah, but he's a quality player. All right, Mark, 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 uh, what's his name? From The Only Way is Essex. Oh, I don't bloody know. Plays it good quality of football. Mark Wright. Mark, Mark Wright, Wright. Yeah, it, it's a decent winger, but well, he's a winger. But there's nothing to stop him picking him. <laughs> How many championship strikers are banging in goals this year? I would imagine a fair few. Could call one of them up. Well, do. Let's hope he hasn't got the same scouting team as West Ham, but they're one scout. <laughs> one scout, one trainer. Oh no, we've got more than one trainer now. We've got a couple. Oh, okay. We've got a couple. We've got we got old Kevin Nolan in. And he's looking Of course. He's yeah. He's looking rough. I tell you that. I still love him. His anecdotes are brilliant, but he is looking rough. Mm. Mm. Uh, oh, Shearer and Wright, he'd still put in a few goals. I'll break an word as well. And and Letitia. Yeah, wouldn't have maybe not the the that well, that's your free substitutes, isn't it? Bring one on for another. It's only it's what half hour each. What about Rooney? Yeah, you still play him. Bring it well for experience, and he knows where the goal is. Mm. That's not a bad shout, actually. There you go. That's my contribution. Wayne Rooney. Well, should we, should we put Phil's contribution here and then fade out into the darkness? Yes. So yes. Here's Phil's thoughts on the Liverpool versus Bournemouth game where Liverpool I mean, were lucky. <laughs> I nearly said fucking Brighton again. Liverpool were oh. lucky. If if it weren't for James Milner, who he was saying, oh, I'll probably get rid of him in the summer, uh, then they would have drawn. Yep. So here's Phil's thoughts. A quick overview of Saturday's first time, first game, lunchtime. So Bournemouth at home to Anfield. Best place for anyone to come and play, um, to play a game. Can we keep a record? So, I think we were, before this, 21 consecutive home games unbeaten. And thankfully, we kept that. 
and made it 22, um, another record for the season, um, written out, but a bit of controversy during the game. Um, I think Bournemouth's first goal was a foul, simple as that, pushing the back of Gomez, when they're both running at speed to get the ball. Yeah, Gomez could have done a little bit better, but to have that blatant foul to give um, the room to then set up and lead to the goal, and um, when you run at full speed, which is blatant. I think our referees afterwards have said the same thing. They reviewed it. Um, commentators at the time also said it. So, a bit agreed with that. But we came through in the end. Um, Mo getting his 70th goal in 100 appearances, um, which is a, a pretty big milestone. Uh, beating quite a lot of other Liverpool legends for that, which is great. And then his uh, strike partner, Mane, coming on board and grabbing a second after um, mistakes from Bournemouth, to be fair. Both of goals and uh, mistakes. Defensive and, and a midfield pass that let us in and just punished them for it. And that's what will happen. Um, we come to Ironfield and we'll punish you. But then I think there was a few players on our side didn't play well. Fabinho, I think he's still trying to find 100% fitness and, and get his sharpness back to there. He seems to be just missing a slight edge, which um, which he had before before uh, he got injured recently. Um, which, if he can get back up, will be a beast there to help look after. Or well, maybe we just need Henderson back um, to help out the defence because he puts in an absolute shift um, nowadays, running backwards and defending, helping out defend, and also the attacks and, and setting up. So uh, we think we're kind of missing out that link player. And then what about Firmino? Terrible, terrible miss. Um, I think the guy just needs to score. Hasn't scored at Anfield now for, for a while. And that could be playing in his mind. And he just needs to get it done. Simple as that. I think as soon as he gets one in, relax, start playing that amazing football he does still. And we'll see him score more goals. So hopefully he'll get one this weekend. But that's it. I think Bournemouth, they did all right. They gave us a tough game. I knew they would. They've got players back now from um, who are coming back into the team from injury, back to fitness, which um, will make them more difficult to play for other teams. And, and for us, they set up well. They gave it a go, tried it on the counter-attack a few times. And uh, James Milner, what a player, what a man. Um, and a superb man of the match performance. To the art captain's band and pretty much saved the game with a goal line clearance which is fabulous again. Defensive mistake, um, players let to run through, give him a yard or so, so, but Milner made up for it. He, he pushed on, carried on through rather than giving up the ball early or giving up on the, on the defender. So when the ball went over, he was there enough to uh, just boot it off the line and, and just help us relax into the rest, the rest of the game, help us wake up. I think we had a lot of possession um, or possession throughout the game and um, playing it around so yeah we need to play a bit sharper I think we've got Atletico coming up and then the big game against Everton which is fantastic um, but even better news is that leaving Saturday it left us with three wins to win the league which is absolutely fantastic news because it could be done within the next few weeks by the end of the month wrapped up done so He's I've been Mike. And, and I've been Ian, and our Twitter handles are above. So please give us a like, follow. Like and subscribe. Please share it. And, and we'll, uh, tell we'll catch us you next week. Tell us on Twitter exactly what you disagree with what we said and why we've been wrong. Yes. Because I'm sure everything just, just, has been. Just friend us. Just share friend us. <laughs> Befriend us. I need some friends. I need some friends. I need some friends. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll see you uh, in the predictions. Nice one. Bye.